Wonder Hubbers, it's Kelly. And today I have a question for you guys. Have you ever wondered why leaves change color in the fall? Yeah, fall is a really pretty time. So it's a good question to have because we want to know what makes beautiful things in this world. Leaves change color. Leaves, first I should tell you that leaves have color in them, right? They're green. We mostly see green leaves like this one. And leaves, they're green because they have a thing called a pigment in them. And a pigment is basically a color molecule. So there's a color, there's color molecules in the skin of leaves. And just like how I have color molecules, pigments in my skin that make my skin the color what it is, right? So these leaves have green pigments in them called chlorophyll. Now chlorophyll in the leaves is not the only pigment in the leaves. It's just the one we see. There's also orange pigments and yellow and red and brown pigments in leaves, but we can't see those because chlorophyll, it kind of hides all the other colors because it's the main color. So leaves change color from green, the main color to other colors in the fall because the chlorophyll breaks down in the fall, kind of goes away. And then there's more space for the other colors to show up in the leaf. And that's when we see all of the pretty reds and the oranges and the browns and the yellows. All of those pretty things show up in the fall because the chlorophyll kind of goes away because it's breaking down because it gets colder in the fall and the days get shorter. So there's less sunlight for that tree in order to make food. You know, trees use sunlight and there's less sunlight. So they don't need as much chlorophyll. Trees are actually storing all their food in their roots so they can eat it all throughout the winter. So they don't need their green pigments on their leaves anymore. And that's why all the colors show up. So today I wanted to do a little experiment with you to help us see the other pigments in the leaves that we can't see. So I have a jar with some leaf that I tore up. I picked four leaves outside from the same tree and I kind of tore them up into little pieces and I put them in this jar because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some rubbing alcohol in the jar to cover the tops of the leaves. Then I'm going to mash, 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 mash the leaves until the liquid in the bottom turns like green. I'm going to leave it a little bit so it makes sure it gets really green. And then what I'm going to do is cut a little strip out of my coffee filter, put the coffee filter in the jar, and then we will be able to see the liquid traveling up the coffee filter and the different colors coming with it out of the leaf. This is uh, when you try to extract color from something using a coffee filter, it's called chromatography. And you can do it with lots of stuff if you wanted to do it with markers and see what kind of colors makes up a marker. You could do that. One time uh, when I was uh, working up north, I did it with lipstick. And you can see all the different shades of pink and red that are in the lipstick if you do it. So we just have to be careful that when we use rubbing alcohol, we do not get it in our eyes. We do not put it in our mouth, definitely not. And we're just very careful with it. So maybe you need help from mom and dad and that's okay. You just gotta be careful with it. It's not going to uh, hurt your skin. Just don't get it in your eyes, don't get it in your mouth. Just be careful. If you wanna wear gloves, that's totally fine. I'm gonna put rubbing alcohol in here, mash, 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 cut a piece of my coffee filter and then we'll be able to let it sit for a little while so that the chromatography can work its magic. And then we'll be able to see what colors were in these leaves at the end. So, I already cut up my leaves, so here I go. So sometimes it requires a lot of mashing to mash all the leaves up, but you can kind of see that now my jar has like a green kind of sludgy look to it. And that's what I want. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. Then I'm gonna come and cut a coffee filter strip out of my coffee filter and stick it in there and we'll be able to finish our experiment. So, oh, and you guys hopefully uh, know not to put rubbing alcohol in your eyes or your mouth, but also make sure you're using a glass 
jar. Glass jar, very important, because if you don't use a glass jar, the rubbing alcohol will uh, wreck whatever you're putting it in. One time, funny story, I put rubbing alcohol in a styrofoam cup by accident because I wasn't paying attention to what I was putting my rubbing alcohol in and the alcohol dissolved the styrofoam cup. So don't do that. Make sure you put it in a glass jar with a lid. <laughs> okay, so I let my leaves sit in my rubbing alcohol for about an hour. Now the next step is to put a coffee filter down there so that the rubbing alcohol can travel up the coffee filter and we'll be able to see the colors in the leaves. So I'm just gonna cut a strip out of this. Looks like it should be long enough. I'm just gonna get a little piece of tape so I can make sure the coffee filter sticks where I want it to on the jar. Just tuck it right there for safekeeping. Now I want my coffee filter to just touch the alcohol. Then tape it so it doesn't move. Then put my jar lid on top. And hopefully, if I let this sit for an hour, the alcohol and the pigments will travel up the coffee filter. So let's see if that happens. Okay, guys, I took the strip of coffee filter paper out of my rubbing alcohol and leaf solution. Looks like this. Uh, but my coffee filter strip looks like this. <laughs> As you can see, there's nothing on it. So my chromatography didn't work the way I wanted it to, but that's okay. I think there might be a couple reasons why it didn't work. And one of them is that I didn't mash up my leaves enough. Maybe I need to smash them up into like more of a paste rather than cutting up some leaves and putting them into the rubbing alcohol. So maybe I needed to mash my leaves up a little bit more. Um, another reason could be maybe that the leaves are not close enough to fall. Like it's still spring right now, right? So that maybe didn't work because of the leaves. It might've been the concentration of my rubbing alcohol. It's 50%. Maybe it needs to be a little bit higher than that. Um, but I wanted to, cause you guys didn't get to see the chromatography today. I just want to show you what it would look like if it had worked. So I'm just going to cut out another strip of filter paper. And I have with me some pencil crayons. <laughs> And I'm just gonna color a little picture for you guys and then we'll go over what we learned. So, here we go. Okay, so if my chromatography had worked, my filter paper strip would have looked something like this. The colors would have been very light. Um, there would have been like some green and some yellow and some orange because all leaves have green, which I, if you guys remember, I told you was chlorophyll pigment. There would be some yellow and there would also be some orange. Orange is like, a, the, the pigment is called carotene and yellow is, I think it's called xanthophyll. So those are like fancy names for yellow, and orange, and green pigments in leaves. And remember I said that all leaves have these colors, just that when the chlorophyll breaks down in the fall because of the temperature and because of the daylight hours, then we get to see the yellow and the orange colors show up more. And when we do chromatography, the rubbing alcohol in the container is 
traveling up the filter paper. So it travels up and up and up. And where it stops traveling up, that's where the lines of color would show up because that's how far they traveled up with the alcohol. And different colors stop at different layers. That's why there was green here first, and then yellow, then orange. I think you guys can see that. <laughs> so they just kind of travel up with the uh, rubbing alcohol and stay where the rubbing alcohol has stopped traveling up. That's kind of how chromatography works. It's really fun. Uh, if your guys' doesn't work, I recommend you try it again. Maybe there's something else, like um, use a marker. Just put like a little, uh, a little bit of rubbing alcohol in a jar, just like this, minus the leaves, and then just dip the very bottom of the filter paper into the rubbing alcohol, and put a little marker line like right at the bottom too. And then the rubbing alcohol should travel up the filter paper and stop. And then where it stops is where you'll be able to see all the different colors in the marker. But anyways, so what we learned, all plants have a pigment in them called chlorophyll. They also have the yellow pigment and the orange pigment. Some of them make a red pigment. And that's why leaves change color in the fall is because the chlorophyll pigments break down and we get to see the other colors then, so. I hope you guys learned something from this. I definitely did. I learned uh, one way not to do chromatography, so that's fun. And I hope you guys keep learning and keep coming back here or to wonderhub.ca to see more cool videos. Bye.